Hi. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> you guys are on mute. Ooh. Can't hear you. Oh, there you go. Okay. Can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I call the order the LHA advisory board on August 16th. Uh, Erica, would you mind doing the roll call? Present. Lauren Selly. Present. Jean Christopher. Here. Arlene Sorkman. Here. And then staff, we have Paul McDonald here, Lisa Gallinar here, and Rachel Betschen here. All right, first on the agenda is the approval of the July 19th, 2022 minutes. Do I have a motion? Um, I will move to approve with one change, sure. and that is a, a word. <laughs> um, in uh, Suzanne Donnell's um, comments, we have her. Um, the facility has good moral. I think she went around. So just an E there. Okay. And otherwise, I, I, I move to approve. Right. Second. 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 We got a motion. Any discussion? Other than that. All right, let's vote. Uh, say aye for yes. Aye. aye. All right, motion passes now, please. Uh, number three on the agenda, public invited to be heard. Nobody's present, correct, or signed up. Yeah. All right, going on to number four, organizational updates. A LHA advisory board member election schedule. All right, so this is my item. Um, first of all, I want to introduce Rachel to everyone. She's an our new community manager here at Fall River. It's been great. Yep. So she comes from uh, Loveland and has a ton of experience and Things are going right. Welcome aboard. Thank you. So, talking about our advisory board member election schedule. So, um, just to recap where we left things, we have um, gone through the board to get approval to extend Tom and Lauren's um, terms through as long as December, however long it takes to get the, our new members on board. We do have authority to go up to seven, we choose to buy us to seven members. Um, and so the plan is we'll take that bylaws update. We don't have a September board meeting because they're doing city council budget work. So our first, our next meeting with the board will be October 4th. So we will take the bylaws update October 4th to change the um, advisory board election schedule to not match the city council's exact meetings of those that need it. So as soon as we have that approval, oh, we on. Your next meeting, September 20th, we'll show you that draft language. Okay. Um, so as soon as we have that approval on the fourth, we can turn around and open up our election process. We've already talked about ways to um, the attributes we're looking for. We've talked about making sure that that application's up on the website um, and trying to do outreach during that time. So what I'm thinking is we can turn around, let's say right away, the next day we could open up the application period, so October 5th. And then um, I wanted to ask how much time do you think would be appropriate to do some of that recruitment because we do need you know, four. Um, we have Lauren's space to, Lauren has to um, reapply. We've got Tom's space as well. So we're looking for at least three new people. At the most. At the, at the yeah. most, right. <laughs> at the most. Thank you. Um, assuming, you know, that's going to be the assumption that this gets react. Um, so I was thinking an appropriate amount of time to make sure we get that outreach, try and give people enough time. Um, I was thinking if we did October 5th to October 28th, that's three and a half weeks. We could extend it longer, but we definitely want to make sure we finish the application review and interview process in November. And then a point by December, you know, I'll try to do that by mid months, if not into the holidays. Um, and actually, our board schedule too. We don't currently have a board meeting in December, um, but we could tack on some big sessions once we have the meeting just for that purpose if we need to. 
So, what do you all think about the timeline for the application period? Does that sound okay, or do you want to adjust it longer or shorter? It's okay. Just how? Where all is it uh, mentioned? Is it just on the website, or where all are we? In the past, it was on the city council's boards and commissions website. We're going to make sure it's on the LJ website, um, and then. Other than that, any other outreach we do is probably not in line with what's been in the past that we know of at least. So it's kind of up to um, us and the advisor board to decide what other kind of outreach we could do. More is better, obviously. So generally, what I have seen in the newspaper is when we, we were advertising all, all of the boards, is there's a little blurb in there about, you know, we're looking at the board. Can we do that or is that a cost thing? I mean, we I'm sure that we can do that. I think it's usually we do postings in the newspaper for other things, and it's never worth $100. I feel like that's worth doing. That's really interesting. Yeah. 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 It's all up on it. Like, it's not. I mean, the other thing I was thinking about if you want a vendor is if there's a, uh, a membership business group or banks. We're going after the uh, city uh, chamber of commerce to let them know that we're in search of XYZ type members. And we're going to talk about this legal as Of hard, it's very echoey and choppy. <laughs> if I wonder if you could move me closer, we could move you closer, just be less people to see. That's but fine, that's probably better to hear than see it. Like, yeah, we're gonna look at the third step too. <laughs> How's that? That's better, thank you. Um, we could definitely check that out. I feel like we already that was included in some of our attributes. Maybe this is yeah. a discussion that I can when we bring if we need to bring anything forward to you, we can do that on the public one about the Yeah, but given it like you said, what, three and a half weeks, right? Mm -hmm. That's a good time for the application. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And so we set will probably start ahead of that, trying to get people uh, pre-leased, um, but it'll start in full force right immediately. That's just a schedule update and also it's nice to keep track of what's going on with the deadline. Uh, the Hoover vacant land, our RFQ for development partner is out on the streets, and we have a due date for uh, qualifications submittals by September 14th. So we'll be turning around and looking at those in depth. We do have several inquiries so far already. We'll see how it goes, but it will be good. We haven't found out anything totally yet. We've got to pick up that naming process again. Um, I think at this point we need to, Bureau wants to do that through his channel since they have a, they've got a, a relationship. So we keep that on top of their radar. But that is definitely the, the main naming uh, route that we were going so far. Feels like we just spoke too long. It <laughs> went fast, summer, summer schedules. Uh, village place recidivation. We are in pro forma development, in full swing on that now. Uh, we have legal representation under contract, ready to go. And we are uh, preparing to uh, go to the investor to talk about the investor exit right now. And so between Sarah Bob and Financial Open, our financial consultant and our legal team were strategizing right now the best way to do that. We expect it to be a challenge for the investor. So we're just trying to prepare as much as we can to be ready with some strategies. But we're that's moving. So we really think that um, by the end of this year, we should be getting an architecture and GC. We should have the out on the streets to try and get somebody on board for that to start really talking about through 2023 what design should look like. And that's really it. I just want to talk about a couple of bigger milestones we've hit since we last spoke. But if there's any questions on any of the developments, there's there's obviously more going on. It's just all in the works. Okay. So, uh, any items number six items for the LHA board of commissioners? So, I, I want to just give you a heads up on what is coming, yep. at least on. So, I think that this this is just a standing agenda item, but yep. I do think that two way communication, anything you would like to bring up and that we had to <coughs> bring up would be good. So, this is just a, a heads up. Um, October 4th, because we don't have a September meeting, will be pretty big. Um, so we're talking about the, we're getting the bylaws taken care of for the advisory board. We're going to bring the HCV admin plan to the board October 4th. Um, and so we're targeting giving you a summary of kind of the major things that, that are going to change at the, your September 20th meeting. Um, those are the, that is going to be a big one. That'll be, it's the first time that this board has gone through the admin plan and making substantive changes if needed. So we're really using this year as an opportunity to get that um, solidified. And so this, it'll be a kind of a, a working session possibly to make sure they understand everything that's contained in an admin plan for a, a voucher program. And it could set policies and, you know, it just might go in a lot of conversational directions there. And then November 1st, we're going to be presenting the budgets to the board as well. So um, if there's items that we want to preview on, we can do that on your, in your October meeting. When does the budget get approved? It just has to be approved by the end of the year. So we're doing November 1st. We have plenty of time. If, we, if the board is not ready to um, approve the budgets right off the bat, set a special meeting if needed for December right now. We don't have the need unless they want that or unless we need to come back for uh, appointments there. Okay, those are the big things on the horizon. So then if we did have any items that we wanted to say have a budget carve out for or something in particular, 
so maybe think that about that and then let us know either ahead of time or go over it September 20th. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else on that? Are we good? Number six. Okay. Seven, uh, resident quality of life. Do you see any gen iron in the map? Well, uh, I could talk a little bit about the, uh, which I brought up last time, or we brought up last time, I should say. I will say that I have since met with uh, Mayor Pat and discussed the um, budget concerns and asked if there was a way that we could have a slush fund, I forget what it's called, but the kind that the city has um, money go towards this to at least get it started and maybe get it moving in the right direction. Um, and I believe that she she actually said that she would go to the council and ask for twenty thousand dollars to get us through twenty two and twenty three. And I think she's going to do that tonight. So I'm planning to attend the council meeting tonight just to see if she does. If if they do approve that, then we move forward with the next thing, getting people, letting people know, you know, and then we'll work with, with Lisa on that and whoever else. But letting people know that this is starting up, this is what it's going to be. And for residents, it's free. It is it is free mm -hmm. service. So. Um, it's just a matter of kind of getting that started again. So that is something. Well, so this is via for the transportation. To shopping. To shopping. And yeah, so what. Particularly um, for senior. You were, you were here last time. Yeah, I, I read a little bit. Okay. It's for so what was, senior communities only, right? So what was it for? Uh, housing, yeah, housing, mm -hmm. housing authority. So um, this happened in the past, and Jean really knows about this because I wasn't living here at the time. but. Um, we did go actually go over to VIA and talk to the people over there, and they're definitely interested. They've done it before, they know how to work this. Mm -hmm. So, we're looking at twice a month, um, one day each time. So, if you've got, if we do it that way, VIA can set aside a, a vehicle and a driver specifically for that day. Otherwise, what happens is people call in and you take what they have available. But this way, they have said that they will set aside a vehicle. So. What we would do, or what they would do actually, is they would go to Aspen Meadows, take them to the Walmart or wherever they want to go, come back, maybe pick up at these two areas, and then pick the first ones up and take it around like that. So we figured at six hours, basing our numbers on six hours each time at $90 an hour, came up to $540 a day. So um, pretty close to 5,000 this year. Uh, closer to 15 next year. That's adding on a little bit. Um, if it gets so popular, because we're looking at an hour and a half right now by the time pickup delivery, pickup delivery goes, if it becomes so popular that we need to add some routes, we could possibly cut it back from the hour and a half to an hour, see if that works. And that way we can still reach more places and still have our six hours. Um, and what the mayor was thinking was that maybe after so if we, she can get it approved through 2023, maybe look at some grant monies or something like that to continue it. Because one thing we don't want is to start it and then have it stop. Right. Yeah, because that, but I will say this, based on my interviews that I did with people last year in 2021, and then interviews I did again this year, 2022, I've seen a number of those people become much more frail. Right. Um, giving up their vehicles. So I think that we need to kind of see if we can help them out a little bit. Okay. And when was this discontinued? Was this? this right. When was this discontinued? Was it around COVID? Right. So. Oh, no. Um, it was 2019 um, when we were in, we were in quote unquote a budget mess. Right. And um, the executive director at the time made the comment that, well, we do housing, not transportation. So they got axed. And um, so for 20 years, you know, 15 years, LHA since it started has always provided transportation. But at that time, it wasn't financially feasible. And obviously the, um, executive director didn't like it, and I guess some of the board members didn't, so 
um, it got axed and it's been a problem. Are you there, Lauren? Yeah. So anyway, it, it has been a, an issue. Um, and did that, did that what, get um, canceled before Tom and I joined? Because I don't remember that discussion. No, we were, we were here in this room. But I, well, we're talking about because I didn't start till like January or February of 2020. Okay, well then, yeah, it must have been before your time. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I was like, I don't remember voting on that because I would have been opposed to canceling it. So when did when did you join? Because this January was 2020. Oh no, this was in 2019. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I I agree. It's a it's an essential service that we provide to our and residents. Yeah, and it, it is, it's always been for the senior community uh, and throughout Boulder County, other apartment, uh, other housing authorities provide it. It's, it's sort of, um, it, it, it's kind of a given. When I, I'll be honest with you, when I moved in, I didn't expect it. I was delighted to find it because um, I had given up my car because of my eyes and I went, okay, this is helping a lot. Um, and we had, um, a, uh, larger service. It was twice a week. And I think we can do it with twice a month and keep the cost down. But um, uh, it, it isn't, um, uh, it, it's one of those resident services that is worth it. it. It really is. And the other thing is that VA has determined they made it a policy <clears throat> that anybody that moves into an LHA property is automatically eligible for via service. And you can be, you know, mobile, you have a car, whatever, but you're eligible. All you have to do is register and, and then you become active. So uh, between VIA's policy and LHA's, it was a go. And then now it's just a matter of getting the getting the funding for it. And it's it's out there. We can we'll scrounge. Yeah. I think working with Brandy and Michelle this past year, there's quite a few grants that we can reach out for. Mm -hmm. um, I'm only thinking Next 50, the Rose Foundation, places yes. that we've solicited before. Yes. That would probably and more than likely don't yeah. give us this. Yeah. Exactly the kind of stuff they yeah. would How many individuals, you know, percentage wise, would you say our senior communities don't either have a mobility issue or don't have a car? I mean, it, it varies by it, property, by property okay. like Hearthstone yeah. Lodge, Aspen Senior, I'd say less than half the residents drive. Okay. Um, okay. Village Place is about 50-50, okay. I'd say Spring Creek, Fall River, about half drives. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so we're still looking at 50%. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. 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 So the vehicles will hold uh, 10 to 12, depending on how many get in there. They also, excuse me, they also will provide uh, you know, a wheelchair. They will pick up a wheelchair as well. The vehicles will be here in Longmont, so they won't have to come from Boulder or anywhere else. They're just here in Longmont. So um, it, it sounds like it's going to, it's really going to work good. It needs to get started. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we hope to start in August or in September, but I think now we're probably looking at October um, yeah. to get it to get it going and get us through, get through it. Yeah, there, there was a point when Village Place needed two trips. <laughs> they, there were so many people yeah. using it. And I think that they, they can work that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing in the immediate area around there for any sort of groceries. Right. Yeah. 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 Feeling the groceries. Mm -hmm. Love to get this walk from the office. Yeah. And <laughs> we lived here. Okay. Um, if, if anything else that I do have, I want to follow up on some of these resident quality of life things we've been speaking about for a couple of meetings, but is there any other specifics you want to bring forward? So um, in, in light of the fact that we've got our, our, our resident engagement and our data from that, which my plan is to have that summary to present to you all on September 20th, got to summarize it and to do the priorities and well you know outline what the group the priorities for the residents and then you know then we prioritize from there but um, with that in mind and then with 
the commissioner's comments about wanting to receive advice and feedback from this board. Um, and bringing that up last meeting, Jen, you had mentioned doing quarterly resident engagements as tie or to tie back and follow up on the survey or the interviews, I should say, that we did. Mm -hmm. um, so I think today I wanted to get kind of something that we could um, work on to bring to the board in terms of advice or feedback. And I think the VIA conversation is perfect for that. Yeah. And then in terms of doing a quarterly one, I was thinking for September 20th, using the, the summarized uh, data and priorities to try and put that on as a quarterly thing as, as a follow-up. And so I don't know how you want, do you want to follow up with <coughs> residents on a quarterly basis or report to this group on a quarterly basis? Do you have any ideas on that, Gene? And basically, I'm trying to see what we could feed to the board. I get, what I would like to see is um, the, the data that you have, mm -hmm. that you said you're going to put it together for the September 20 meeting. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And I think that would give us an outline of what to do and, and sort of the jumping point. Mm -hmm. And we can develop it from there. Because if we're looking at a September being a um, end of quarter kind of thing. And then we'll look at what time we have in December and what that looks like. But I wanna see what you've got and then what we could follow up with residents and what we need to follow up it, um, it, 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 to impact residents in a, in a better way. Kind of, you know. well, I think looking, I just wanna put in, you know, from what I heard from the resident surveys, like the security was a big thing. We've already addressed that and in the works on that. There's a lot of things that are already in the works, the resident issues that have been in the works. And we can so report back. That we can report back in the fourth yeah. quarter. But I think. Yeah, one of, one of the things, and I don't know if it came up because I stood back from the interviews because I was biased. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of the things that keeps coming up is um, nobody around. And I know you're working on it. I, I do what I can to assuage you. It's going to get better. It's going to, you know, and, and they're yelling at me. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, stick yell at me. Don't yell at the Korean. Okay, <laughs> but, um, but, but that's one of one of the areas. I don't know if it came up in here is, but that's one of the areas that what while there that? are cameras and those kind of securities, there is a sense of security when someone is of responsible is there mm -hmm. and and um we we'll talk about that more but but that's one of the issues that keeps coming up and that did come up and it was and then on the other hand it was if the person is not going to be there is there a way to put a note on the door or something like that that says you know nobody's here today um, i yeah. think we've kind of Got that the last few times when I know there's training, but I'm trying to make sure the managers put a notice up on your door that the offices yeah. are closed. If yeah. day you're supposed to be on that site, holidays, I'm like, make sure there's a notice up, make sure the emergency yeah. number's right there. So, do you want to give a quick update on how the property manager hiring process and your transition? <laughs> Where is that already coming on? Well, I, I do have it down. Okay, so we'll, we'll just okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I want to see that people put that. Okay, let's do that. <clears throat> okay, that was that was it. I just wanted to make sure we were tying together your desires with what the board's feedback was. And I, I'm going to request something. I, I don't know if you can do it, but we get the packet the Friday before. I would like to see the results of the interview, the data from the interviews. Like a week before, sure. We could, yeah, and get that out just so it, I have time to absorb it. Yeah, that's a good idea. And think about it. Here. So we'll shoot to get that to you by Tuesday, the 13th of the latest. Thank you.
Let's go on to number eight. LHC report, update on operations, occupancy report. Um, I've attached, we did have a drop in occupancy for July. Um, just we have a lot of meth units, and you'll see on the bottom, I did update this to kind of show all the meth units, down units, and all that. We just, um, it's hard trying to get these units back online. We do have one coming back online by the end of this week, and that will be the speech unit 7110 that's been down for over a year. That one will be rent ready this week. Um, um, the one at Aspen Meadows neighborhood that's been down for almost a year will be up in October, and that will be Corinne's unit. She's going to move from the suites over there so that F3. she's what? F3. Yeah, she'll be um, living in that one. We've had a couple of just bad units all around. As you can see, we had the lodge, we had really heavy urine. So we had to completely rip out all the flooring, kill the, the walls, kill the floors, everything, seal it, and put all brand new in there. Okay. We had one at the suite that was a food quarter with a bad infestation. So even the appliances had to be disposed of. And um, no, it was. It was um, Fruit flies and bats and maggots and the, the fridge had to go to the dumpster. My team was amazing in handling that move out. We pulled the screws out so I could oh. let the guy out. The sheriff stood in the hallway because they could not go in and take care of me. Um, it's been quite interesting. Let's see, spring, just to go back up to the meth units. Um, 714, that was the, the highest one that we had. It's now completely cleaned. Um, we got the bid from the adjustment we're just waiting for the insurance to okay the rebuild on that one. Um, 7330, that unit was clean and released back to us um, two weeks ago. We have some schedules for that one as of Friday. As for the senior, that unit has been cleaned. Um, it failed the first cleaning, so we have to now go back in and clean it again. Um, it's the archives or are you? No, we're not allowed to. It's actually, and so they didn't clean it, so it failed, huh? Well, they clean it, but it just depends on the core surfaces are hard. So, um, and they'll try cleaning it again if they can't get the certain, it's certain areas that fell. Like sometimes it's the kitchen counters or it's um, the tubs around. And if they can't get it clean, then we have to rip that up and that's where our cost go up. It's, so, I'm hoping that they can just clean it again and with their pinnacles. And so, you guys know when they do a typical cleaning and it's in the walls, when they have to clean the walls, they're taking off all the surface of the wall, all the paint, putting it down to the drywall. And then we have to go back in, texture, paint it. And yeah. when they're done, it's not just a front ready unit. We still have to go in and do major work ourselves. So F3, like I said, is almost done. Um, they were saying in the September, but Friday's report since the HVAC is on delay to be delivered and the cabinets were delayed. So now they're saying October. Um, B2 at the neighborhood that was in the kitchen a couple weeks ago. Um, we just got the test results this morning and that did come back as contaminated. And that's that it's most likely going to be Correct. This will be a rebuild. Oh, the thing with that one is there's no garage, so that's a lot less. <laughs> that's F3 has a garage attached, so that one yeah. took even more. Yeah. Spray Creek 106, and that was released and um, already putting a new move in. They're saying to move in. Any questions on the occupancy? So, based on, oh, okay. so based on the fact that for two years we really haven't been able to get into the places, I'm thinking that this is going to be less in the future because you guys are going to be able to get in once a year or a year more frequently than Correct. that and check this out. And have it tested to see if we tested the renewal. Yes, that's what we're that's what we're, we're sorting through. The, we at the same time that we are proposing that policy, we're going for our annual insurance renewal. Yeah. So we're yeah. chatting with them about how uh, just weighing the risk, you know, because in the long run it will be a lower risk. In the short run, it might be expensive. Expensive, and we want them to be on. Board with us, so we're still talking to the insurance. So we have to come in and back in. Yeah. Is there a grant out there for that? What? 
is there a plant out there? Um, <laughs> I much more like to um, with Tim at the in between. I came to me and called me because he was having so much, and he's actually applied for one grant. He hasn't been awarded it yet, and he went for a hundred thousand to help cover um, three units because he doesn't have the insurance, so he's having to pay for it all out of pocket. And so they can they have been said put down for years because they have to pay for it as we get funds they have to pay for it. So he applied for a grant to um, get it. I have all the information. He's already sent it to me. So if he does get awarded the grant, we can possibly go after this and sue the EPA. So the environmental oh, protection awesome. okay. so and okay. and it's yeah. for contaminants and stuff like that. So it, yeah, it seems like EPA would support the, um, the insurance company right. um, if you know give an impetus um, to do the testing before they get to get a uh, in order to do this kind of thing. Because mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm understanding right, that's one way to do it. Yeah, as, as um, when somebody moves out, we test. You're not going to be going in and testing while I'm still in there creating the house. Okay. Uh, the, you know, the insurance company, they were saying, you know, it's about the underwriting. And mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We, we sprung it on them. <laughs> <laughs> so that was their automatic response, and that we're like letting them digest and sending them information to them. Okay. And I think they were kind of. That, you know, being proactive. They said it. it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You just have to look at how the underwriting part policy and what the, the price is. Because, I mean, you could argue that if you get the catching early enough, it would just be a cleaning rather than a full exactly. 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 And if we find, let's say, I mean, the chances are we we will, if we just did this across the board right off the bat, we would definitely find some things. Mm -hmm. The chances that we buy find many really big ones are not high. So it's really looking at that initial, like how many are we going to find right off the bat that require reconstruction? And then after that way, then what's the benefit? So we're just trying to make sure they understand how this looks. Mm -hmm. And then don't they pay an initial deposit? Or they move the, the residents too. Yeah. It's yeah, not so that close not, to what it would have. Yeah, but oh, yeah. it would be something towards it. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Typically, there's other damages or other costs, or which the attorney's fees way outweigh that big time. So, yeah, yeah. But we are working on model residents. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank we need better change that. We'll work on that. I was going to say, I'm like, I'm like some of these, all these on these lists for these meth units and bad move outs probably take. Of my my time myself, four to ten hours of just literally yeah. just dealing with in a month. Yeah. So. And I will add that, that the in between is in a much tighter spot. They have oh, yeah. fewer total units, higher percentage of units they have in this situation, and they don't have insurance. So we're really this insurance policy is bold. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So and don't they depend on donations to kind of keep them going a lot of it? A lot, donations, brands. Wow. So, oh, man. so we're trying to be support, you know, work together, helping me. We both have the same problem in varying degrees. So, yeah. I, I have another question on, on, on this report. Um, and um, I'm not familiar with Yardi. Never wanted to be, okay. <laughs> Um, but you are. Is there a possibility that when you're listing, um, and I'll, I will take Aspen Meadow Senior, mm -hmm. um, you've got four vacant, and you know, one of them's Smith, okay, but for those four apartments, um, could you give us, you know, apartment, the apartment A is been vacant 30 days, and apartment the the math apartment has been vacant sixty two days. I'm going to be like can because um, so I keep a board next to my desk with all these lists out like the long term vacancies yeah. because I know this might be confusing to some when you see four vacants month after month. And ask the medicine different, but like the lodge, she's had multiple vacants and the heart center has multiple vacants, but it's not the same vacants because somebody will move in, somebody will move right, out. Right. So those that are long term, I can do those vacant over ninety days or something. Okay. So like three of these have been vacant over 90 days. 
that's a separate report I would run to get those numbers. Okay. But then you can see how long our vacancy is. Yeah. Okay. Because it is different if it's, if mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, you know, Turnover. people leaving yeah. and what have you. Um, but ours, you know, they've been there mm -hmm. a while. And you know that's that's a staff issue. You know all the all the other stuff that's been going on, not just staff. I'm not blaming staff. I'm you know, but it's just a little more background. Of, am I looking at the same four apartments? So I, like, I was thinking about that this week when I was doing this. I was like, yeah, because I know she's had quite a few move-ins here at Spring Creek and Fall River, and they're not. And she's had move-outs, and I'm doing the move-out reports that you guys aren't seeing. You know, the move-outs, the move-ins, yeah. the move-outs, the move-ins yeah. that it's not the same units at all the properties. Yeah, right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I figure, you know, the the whatever generates this is lagging because you know we have five agents. Yeah. 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 Well, because this is like the last one. one didn't get in there in time. Correct. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. But thank you for making it five. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so Lisa, I have a question. Um, when you go through here, you know, and you list all of these and you, you add them up, um, Spring Creek doesn't quite add up, and I just was wondering, are we, um, is there one more rental unit that should be listed there? Or that. There was four vacant, so. Oh, because yeah. one was the down unit, I think. Yeah, you've got so the down unit, and then you've got two rentals. I wonder if it's really three rentals. To bring we have up four, in. we have four. Well, well, river had to to July. Right. Well, that's, yeah, it said so one moved in Friday, yes. so that might have so, been. Yeah. Yes, I moved in. Yes. So, and it's hard, I'm like, kind of do this a month behind, but talk to them current. Try to get who's moved in, let's rent it. So, I can give you guys a better snapshot of what's truly available. Right. But that's that's right. my problem on this one. I was trying to get it done and talk to them and figure out where we truly sat with our vacancy. Yeah. So, but there is now how many vacants? Four? That's four vacants. And one just moved out because she went to Village Place. Yeah, that's that board. And then there's four here. Lots of weightless calls. <laughs> Lots of weightless calls. So, any other questions on the occupancy? Yeah. Well, on the weightless, I mean, are, are we getting responses pretty quickly on from those from people? Or? So, I, I called five of each property and gotten about one or two responses. Mm -hmm. So, then one of the properties said, Can I keep moving forward? Can I call more people? You can call five, but maybe one more response. Right. Right. Makes you wonder if they really need a place. Yeah, they will put their but, a lot of what we'll see is we'll put their name on multiple lists as well. Right. So, right. right. Yeah. Yeah, and you call them like, well, I don't know what's going to be not Fall River. So even though they put their name on Fall River, they have to do an application per property. Right. They still, oh no, I'd rather wait for this one, or I can't move for another six months. Yeah. Or, yeah, right? because that's right. Place, right? That yeah. happens a lot. Yeah. Our rate is the great when we have 50, 60 people on them, but by the time you start calling, they're like, oh, I can't move to next year. Oh, I was looking for two years out, or oh, I'm not 62 yet, so. Mm -hmm. Or I don't have any income. Or you can't get through because the phone number doesn't work anymore. <laughs> There's yes. that too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, so we probably will be opening a lot of our wait list here shortly. I know Eric and I started discussing it because even uh, Corinne's been calling out Aspen and just dead ends. Yeah. So, but we have to work through that wait list later yeah. so we can open it up and start fresh. Yeah. So at least when we open fresh, we know those people are very eager and want to move. So our goal is to get to these wait lists and try to get them open pretty quickly. So, and that will help with the occupancy as well. <laughs> yeah. And then with the, with the wait list for the properties, is that that's not randomized, right? Is that correct? It's just first? yep. That's yeah. first, and we just first time. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, but and typically when we open those, there's no cap. We just take every application that comes in. Mm -hmm. And the only ones we um, asked since I was helping Corinne on them last week, I was going through, I was like, wait, this lady's only 38 years old. She does not qualify. <laughs> then I move on, oh, this guy, uh, 49, he doesn't qualify. So we have to go, you know, as we come across them, pick them up. So. Yeah, but doesn't your application or whatever just say you have to be 55 or 60? Yeah, but yeah, but um, as for those, you can be any age if you're handicapped. So you know, not with the resyndication. It, yeah, huh? Not with the resyndication. Oh, really? Oh, you have to be sixty-two now. Oh, see, I didn't. I missed that paragraph. Okay, because it's all new funding docs. So it's the same thing that happened to Village Place. Then, well, Village Place is sixty-two and over. They don't have. The 20% okay. under. So. Yeah. 
Okay, so well, that was uh, that was part of a tax credit funding many many years ago. That right. when you put if you went through all avenues to fill your units, then you could step into a twenty percent for those who were disabled mm -hmm. and under the age. Yeah, but you have to show that you have reached out to so many people to try to fill it with age appropriate people. Thanks. Which is why the waitlist never closed. We just <laughs> accumulated. <laughs> Yeah, well I'm, well, I'm glad for that clarification because I would have been, I would have been misinforming people. Okay. okay moving on to the property updates. Um, and this is some of these we may have already gone over. Um, I try to update these as we come in. So part of my goals for 2022 was to quarterly walk with all the properties. There was one done earlier this year and I, I wrote, I walk with, um, Cameron from city facilities and we kind of walked all the properties and got a general plan, kind of going what needed to be done and what were high priority items. Um, this, this coming quarter, when I get back in September, I'm walking all the properties with Dave, the site facility maintenance person and the set manager. We already have these all scheduled. It's a four hour walk where we will start at the top of the building, kind of walk all the hallways, every storage room, every closet and start coming up with small projects, capital needs improvement, things that we need to make sure we're budgeting for before we approve these budgets, just so we know what we're looking at, along with we've already done the ADA and accessibilities one, so that we can combine some of these and see what these properties need. And then it's on my quarterly calendar so that I can follow up on projects. Like if I see hole in the wall, yeah. it'd be like, you need to get this done. And then my next, if it's there next time, then I know I have an issue if that hole was not patched because that's a one hour project total, so. So quality control with those walks. So those are already scheduled for the rest of the year, the first two quarters of next year. But are you looking at like long-term needs too? Like, Correct. You yes. know, three years out, two years out. Of Correct. Right. Seeing where we're at with a lot of this. And okay. Pulling part of our walk that we just had done um, has a lot of these things already on it, but it's just being more proactive on it too, because there's things we can do now to lengthen the life of some of our items as well. And then um, I didn't put this under the general property updates, but I think the fair housing training was amazing. A uh, great turnout. We had yeah. over 50 people between remote and in person. So that was great. Was great. Money well spent by LHM. So. And on that, are you guys required to have fair housing certification? How often? Annually. Annually for Annually. all sites. Okay. So this was much more, usually it's just have to have like a fair housing 101, yeah. but this was much more okay. than the requirement. Yeah. 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 It was good, mm -hmm. really good. So our hope is to bring something like this every year to get that more in depth to back up our general one that we have to do for Chaffa. And um, mm -hmm. we have Yardi Aspire, which is our trading modulars that have it in there that we require the staff to do it, but it's like an hour long. So this will be a great second and more in depth where we can use our own stories relatable yes. situations, what yes. we're encountering, right. because it's so different than what the, on these nationwide trainings or statewide trainings. Yeah. I think long, long one is so unique to the situations we see here. Yeah. So. And is it normally like online or is it in person? Like the last few years have been in person, so that we all do it. And we kind of do it, we set a time frame, we had to have it done this month and the staff can log in and do it and pass the test. But. Mm -hmm. But I think opening it up to the boards, um, we opened it up to community, neighborhood, HCI, all these different departments that interact with LHA, I think really helps them see what we're doing with senior services. I know talking to Brandy afterwards, she was like, wow, she's like, stuff that you guys have to mm -hmm. encounter. She's like, we think it's an easy yes or no question. And for you guys, it's A, B, C, D, C, you know. Yeah. Right, right. And so she's like, she felt it, it kind of made her department a lot more aware of how they need to help residents and not help residents on stuff when it comes to fair housing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that each case is not directly the same. <laughs> and, and, uh, so it isn't one size fits all. Correct. <laughs> um, for the suites, the LHA team spent two Wednesdays uh, working together to spruce up the community. So after we did lockouts, eviction moveouts, the team got together and we um, have been doing projects. Um, for the suites, we the halls, common, uh, common areas were all repainted. We rearranged furniture, power wash, um, scrub, you name it, it happened at the suites. So all three floors, all community rooms. Um, the residents are extremely ecstatic. They we kind of set up a little reading nook in the back of the front. They have a huge large when you walk in, so yeah. we made a little reading nook in the corner. And right after we move the furniture, our resident goes over and he's like, 
I love this. He's like, I want to be involved, but I, I don't uh -huh. feel that I can be. And he's like, I feel now that I can be part of the community, but yeah. still have that little Which is exactly yeah. some yeah. of the trauma informed yeah. design that we're putting into the building next door. There's opportunities wow. to have privacy in the group. Yeah, it looks so much better when we got the. It, yeah, it's so inviting. Just getting the walls, doing some contrast. Yeah. Corinne moved her office up into the glass office that we use for security. So Corinne has now moved into that. So when she's there um, on site, they can see her. She's present. She can see who's coming in and out. And it helps her kind of control and do what she needs to do and catch residents as they're coming and going as well, instead of being down the hall where right. we've noticed residents at the suites feel like they're walking to the principal's office there. Right. Because they have to go in and they go down a hall to get to an office. There, she's right there. She's present. She can open the window. They don't have to come in. They don't have that. Oh, wait. Do I really want to do that today? Because <laughs> you do know they have a lot of that anxiety and stuff at that party. Yeah. So, right. looking over their shoulder. Yeah. And so we did that right before the investor NHG came out um, and they they were excited with the property conditions. The residents were actually out there talking to the investors, you know, saying how much they like it there, how much it's changed. And so the investor left on a happy foot. So we were excited for that. Awesome. awesome. Um, a little bit more. Um, I already talked about the Beth units there. And then we had two evictions granted in July. One for abandonment and then one for um, substantial lease violations but both are pending move outs in august if they don't move out on their own then it will be the sheriff come up to do it will they go in if it's moving? yes well because we haven't tested yet but they go they go in clear the unit and then my team has to go in and move all the belongings to the curb mm -hmm. so we are the fastest movers in long lots so oh yes yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have packed the units and got everything outside, 10 of us, in less than an hour. We have got that one in the next one and a half to do it. It is swift, yeah. So, and I've used that at um, going on to ask the last year when we've done a couple of the lockouts recently. The residents are either sitting outside sharing us on, <laughs> motivating the maintenance guys, taking off and making sure my food is hydrated. And this was those days that were like 96, 97, we were doing this at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, so let me just say something. Um, when I was interviewing at, at Aspen Meadows last year, there were there were several people who had a concern about one particular resident. I know who it is, and my understanding is that based on their concerns and the fact that you guys saw video of this, this person has been evicted. Is that correct? Correct. Great. I I applaud you for that. So we had. That's um, why they were applauding you. Yeah. <laughs> So we, we've had three big, um, we had three cases in the last few months there, and all one moved out on their own through the eviction process, and two others were um, with the sheriff's assistance. Yeah. Um, but I will say my calls that I was probably getting from Aspen Meadows Senior a day, five to 10 calls. I get none. Good. None. <laughs> so it was, that was probably a good hour of my day prior to these evictions was the residents calling, did you see this? Did you see this? And then I had to go in, pull the video footage, say mm -hmm. that, document it, make, talk mm -hmm. to residents, get witness statements. It was, mm -hmm. it was a process. So it is completely calmed down at Aspen. I bet it's quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, my concern now is it's getting too quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Who's plotting what? <laughs> <laughs> so Aspen Meadows neighborhood, um, the, the meth unit, like I said, which will be the current unit, will be done in October. They've already confirmed that. And then um, we had one eviction that was granted for the non payment um, from September to July and had not paid rent. So we got that one um, evicted, moved them out. And then that's when I got the positive results on this morning. For Briarwood, the Veterans Community Project um, completed their outdoor beautification project that we went 50 50 on them. LHA paid half, they paid half, and they got all volunteers to do the work. They refurbished the gazebo, um, made a kind of barbecue area, redid the landscaping, planted flowers, and stuff. And the residents even started helping, going out there and planting the flowers and helping out. Um, there we had one eviction granted for non payment of rent for multiple months. And I believe we're already pending a move in through the locally funded voucher program into that unit. So that one will be. Taking a short amount of time. So, not knowing a whole lot about Briarwood, are the majority of the people in there disabled or not? They're not disabled. Um, 
some of them were there through the probation program that used to be part Briarwood originally had they were probationary units through um, the sheriff's department and some of them obtained vouchers after living there for so long um, some are locally funded vouchers from the city of Longmont that have come off of um, local case conferencing for the homeless um, we have we're working on our third unit there and then the other ones are just None of them are hard to house. Um, some have just anxiety issues. Um, so we have two families living there as well. There's a single dad and a child, and then um, a couple of married with infant child. So um, with veterans community projects, we do have some veterans living there. Um, and so they work with those veterans, but they kind of embrace the whole community because it's 10 units. So they work with those residents, help them, um, and they kind of see back in, you saw this, you know, this is going on. So it's kind of like sort of ideas too. Well, this used to be where the LHA were. Mm -hmm. And then so um, on one of these, we also had one pending eviction that the guy did. Um, it was an eviction from a few months ago. We evicted his neighbor, which was his girlfriend. And then so then he kept on letting her come back to the property and spend the night. So we worked with um, Veterans Community Project, his caseworker, because he's on a veteran voucher. And Kind of explained to him what was all at Jeopardy, and he was like, you know what, I'm staying here. I'm not going to jeopardize my housing. I'm going to be in compliance. Um, no more police calls, nothing. He's completely coming into compliance with the police and using the case management efforts for community project as well to make sure that he's. So that was one of the things we were able to make. So that was nice. The LHP properties, um, village place, we took. We heard the residents feedback after the last meeting where they're like, nothing's been done, you know, the community areas are looking bad. So we updated the office um, one Wednesday after eviction, and then we would have got paint sample colors, posted them on all the columns so that they could start voting. Because we figured that's an easy update to do inexpensively, is because that um, they all hate that ugly brown color when we walk in. So we got blues, greens, grays, and we got we narrowed it down, moved them throughout the community, and put four of each color up that way with each color. And they've been voting, marking, tallying, you know, which colors they want. So our hope is um, end of September, early October, to at least take the columns and the entry way where it's that second round into kind of a blue, blue or a green, something that kind of more up and goes with the carpet, kind of takes the whole community for themselves. So, right. so we took that away from the last one. <laughs> Free Creek, um, the residents hosted a 4th of July barbecue there with their community funds. They had a great turnout. And then on Tuesdays, they're doing a Taekwondo class in their community center. And it's, when I've been watching the time, it's about 40% of the residents are now participating in that every Thursday morning. So, and one of the residents is a certification flight instructor, so she goes out there and she teaches it in his all chair, all in their chair. And they love it. Oh. They love it. But it's kind of giving them something to focus on. I'm sure you're getting ready for it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Fall River here, they've um, really been working on their garden. You can see the pots they all plant and all those wildflowers that are growing. And they have a beautiful garden at the end of the year that was featured in our newsletter that is just overflowing. So that's been one thing. They never had that to feature. They never really had it because they opened during COVID. So they're just starting to get into that. And they have food distributions. And <laughs> yeah. Anything for spring week fall you want to add? They did their last spring week did a birthday celebration on Saturday. They do that technically. And I know they're getting ready to do a big arts class. They said, yeah, proposal about $300 worth of items they want to do. Um, about half the residents signed up to do it. And with, um, they want to do a painting class and everything. So they need to get the eagles that will be reused over and over, brushes and all that. So that's my project is that really getting all their fun stuff ordered. <laughs> I know that we have to hear that. I gave you that list too. Should yes. <laughs> okay. Um, also for Fall River, one unit was granted eviction for non permanent rent right for multiple months. After the eviction was granted, the resident, I guess, finally let her family know what was going on. Because we can't just call the family and say, hey, this is what's going on. Right. We, we, we can encourage, we can try. But she did not. But she finally did reach out to her family. Her son reached out to us. Um, we were able to sit down. Management, senior services, um, so the mediation department for the city of Longmont with her son, and we sat down and we kind of went through. And um, she had the funds 
available. It took them a couple weeks to get them, but they got all the funds, paid all the attorney fees, all the back room friends, everything to vacate the judgment to make him her house here. So, and now her son's taken over the financial responsibility to make sure the rent's paid. But it, it was the beginning, we built maybe the onset of other stuff, and the son had not seen it until we sat in that meeting. And one of my managers was able to ask the same question multiple times. And she gave me a different answer that the son was finally aware of how significant because we see it and we try to get adult protective services involved. Um, but they said that when they talked to her, she was cognitive enough and that it was not a good right. right. So and then and to in and out. It yeah, hard one because we yeah. felt like she needed some extra help, but she wouldn't let us reach out to her family. So it's nice that everybody can work together. She mm -hmm. still lives here mm -hmm. and everything's going good. The son lets us know, hey, I dropped off the rent, we're good. Yeah, yeah. For her, we said mine and give her a copy of the rent check, just so she has it. And, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Yes, much better. Yes. So that's like one of our happy cases recently. <laughs> <laughs> then we have one pending um, eviction right now. Well, we've already been granted eviction through the courts. Um, had a secondary inspection for court order for with code enforcement sale. So we're just waiting now for lockdown. The system truck. Mm -hmm. Truck which is still out there, but it isn't the junk piece right now. That's because we work with him to clean that up. Yeah. But now it's the apartment's another issue that's not oh, in code. Yeah. Okay. Probably not everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, Hearthstone, no updates at the moment. Um, the lodge, we, because the HUD budgets are due a little bit sooner than anything, we have to get those proposals out. We are proposing for the lodge um, about an eight percent increase. This isn't passed on to the residents; it's passed on through the HUD subsidy that we get. So we did. Kendra and I went out and posted notices last week to let the notice the residents know that we would be asking for a rental increase there. And it's where we're, we're seeing cost increase already is the snow removal. Obviously, we budgeted eleven pools and we had fifteen so far this year, and we're not even done. So we know we're going to be over budget there. I think the lodge had a fifteen to twenty percent. Insurance increase, so and then we have the increased salaries, benefits, stuff like that. So, so um, and I know we've talked about this before, but there was a thing about the LHDC turning all the properties over to mm -hmm. LHA. Is that still in process? It is. Okay. So I can give a quick update on that. We just um, provided an update on that to the board the last time we went with them, which was August second. So. Um, for Village Place, we're looking at whether we can get the transfer to happen ahead of the resyndication or if it has to go with it. Um, that's part of that investor strategy. Um, for the land that LHDC owns at Hearthstone, next to Hearthstone and Lodge, um, we're thinking it's just going to be a purchase where we're thinking about using the city's ARPA funds that have dedicated to that land to purchase it because LHDC does owe the affordable housing fund out of the city once they transfer ownership. So just doing a you know purchase exercise and moving the money in a big circle. Um, that would take care of that one. Um, Spring Creek and Fall River are supposed to be pretty straightforward. We just need investor approval um, to switch over the entity. And so the attorneys think that that would be pretty straightforward and they're getting going on that. That's going to be the first ones to do since it's probably pretty straightforward. Um, and what, who else am I missing on? Those players, they said, the land, Spring Creek, Fall River. Spring Creek, Fall River. That was it, Hearthstone Lodge. Oh, Hearthstone and Lodge. Oh, I thought it was a stay. Um, Hearthstone and Lodge is, um, well, we're looking at doing the exit from the 202 program. Yeah. So we're trying to see, do we do it? Do we just transfer the land before? Do we have to wait till after? We have to kind of strategize that one. It's according to the attorneys, they think it's going to be rather straightforward, but we just have to figure out which thing comes first is best. What's the impact uh, on the residents of exiting 202? They will all go to project-based vouchers. So then after one year of being on a project-based voucher, they can request a section or the housing choice voucher, which is a section eight voucher, and be able to take their voucher outside. Right now with the 202, they pay 30% of their rent, but it's not transferable. They only get that subsidized right at that property. Right. But when, when, and then LAJ would have more control over the budget. Everything we do would not have to be approved right. by HUD. Right. Yeah. So and their rent would that's 
stay at 30% of their They are going to stay at 30%, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the yeah. voucher would come with the maker. All right. Yes. Okay. Um, so they get additional services too, and we would just continue on with the additional right. services. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Because those uh, are already built into our budget. So it actually gives us a little bit more budget flexibility. Like, yes. if I need to replace an AC right now, I can't say, yes, just go do it out of budget. We have to get the approval from HUD to go buy that AC. So. And, and uh, that way they would fall into, um, it, you wouldn't have that crunch of having to submit vouchers um, for the property all the time. I, it, it, it'll be, it, it will be taken over by the uh, HCV team. Right, right. The manager yeah, part of that to system. the WCMS every yeah. month and the tax yeah. reporting and everything yeah. to get that funding from HUD. Right. And where we've been delayed funding for months at times that yeah. at the end of the year when we're still waiting for approval right. and funding, where we can go, I think it was the lodge with four or five months with no funding for that right. property this year. Right. So that will not take it because it will be paid through HCV yeah. directly, okay. monthly. Yeah. So it's more flexibility. For both LHA and the residents. Exactly. Yeah. Without yeah. changing your rent. Yeah. To get out of the program. If they wanted to, so if, so they, if they didn't want to live at Hearts on a Lodge anymore, once they're in the housing choice voucher, they could just go anywhere and use it. Mm -hmm. Which I understand is a little hard to find places that'll take yes, that. Yeah. You know, yes. That's the, the challenge. But they could stay at Hearts and Lodge if they don't want to do that, but if somebody really wanted to. So does the LHDC board still meet? They do. Mm -hmm. So has have you mentioned to them that we have openings on the LHA board? Would any of them be interested? Well, that is a great idea. Over? Yeah, that's a great idea. We meet with them in September because they would bring some different, different background information mm -hmm. into the situation. We meet with them on September twenty first, right after your next meeting. So I will, um, I will put that on there. That's a great point. Yeah, there is one that we're going to ask. Good. Okay, and then just so the stacking and the open positions. So the Spring Creek Fall River Village Place. Kat is going to be the Village Place starting next week. She'll be full time there. Kat will be full time Spring Creek Fall River. Rachel, Rachel, Rachel sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I have a right to me. Um, Corinne is splitting her time 50 50 between the Aspens and the Suites um, because we are down two assistant managers we've been trying to hire. We had one we made an offer for, but would not could not pass all the background checks. We had another one we were reaching out to, but she took another position in the city. So I made an offer on Friday. He's accepted. He's actually already going through the city's hiring process. So fingers crossed we can get him started by next week. Um, the custodian, I think we're just going live on that one now to the city. We've had it in our hands, but we haven't got much any traffic. So hopefully now with being listed on the city website and all the city resources that we can start hiring and getting good candidates for that position. And then we have the three positions for the building attendant at the suites that will replace security. Um, we did one interview on Friday and we have another interview tomorrow. So we're moving ahead on that one. Hopefully we'll get those staff here pretty shortly. Okay. Clarification, what is, what is the difference between the building attendant and the security? The building attendant is kind of a dual role. So instead of just sitting there watching the front door, they'll be more proactive on the property. They will be helping out maintenance, okay. um, custodian, they, yeah. so that they're not just sitting yeah. there. Um, we've already, we're interviewing, it's in our job description that, you know, it could entail anything from help filing office work to okay. painting the corridors. If they're on the graveyard shift, it could be painting a vacant or touch up painting the hallways, just to help maintain the property as well. So it's 24 seven, somebody's gonna be there. Not, tw not 24 seven. Um, it is like 23 seven. <laughs> yeah. So somebody will be there seven days a week. Um, the night shift, I believe is like 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Five days a week and that's the full-time position. And then there will be two weekend people that will be the 24 hours on the weekend. And those are two 20 hour shifts with flexibility to cover holidays and vacations and stuff. So I know I've asked this question before, um, are we bringing our salaries up to meet like the rest of the area? I know that last time we had a meeting, one of the concerns with Harold was that we need to look at raising salaries for next year. Are we bringing 
Is that a problem with some of these why we're not filling up the salaries? No, we, we are competitive in the market. Um, we do the city. When we came over into the city, they did the market analysis for all of them and the hiring range, the pay ranges, and we expect to that. We follow the city's plan. We do expect um, increases for everyone, but that's what Kendra's working on the budget right now, but for 2023, mm -hmm. most city and LHA positions mm -hmm. we're gonna, to, to keep up the market. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. So we, we are right there with the market. We, we check indeed all, every so often just to make sure that we're staying competitive. And they get benefits, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, you know, that's, that's, that's part of their salary. Yes. Yeah. So that, it's just at the very competitive hiring market. That's good. So I will just notice um, or mention, you don't see finance updates on here, which you usually do. Um, the LHA board did give direction to Kendra to just reserve that for quarterly instead of monthly. There wasn't as yeah. much to update on. Yeah. So that's, that's gonna okay. start happening. Oh, I had one last. So coffee and conversations, we did not do it in um, August. We had a few in July with some different vendors come out, Pace and True Pace came out at a couple properties and Cultivate came out to a couple properties. Um, August, we didn't schedule anything because of vacation, school starting, it's been very hectic and being lower staff, but we do hope to resume in September and October. And our plan is to have Kendra and Harold to attend those because we know we have, LHA hasn't done rent increases in several years. So we know it's going to be a big topic because we, we do need to implement some rent increases coming into 2023. And um, so with lease renewals in 2023, so we are preparing that looking at different strategies for some properties. Some properties, Fall River is operating very close to what Chaka allows us to. Annually, I think we are operating at like 30,000 under for the year from max rents, but we have Village Place that's operating at 327,000 under. But we so can. these rent increases are going to go to the residents? What's the percentage? We, we haven't determined all that yet. We're looking at the different brackets. We have like three, five, seven, ten. 10, um, looking at the properties income based on the, the demographics of the residents incomes. And so we have a big, it's been some big meetings. So. Yes. Well, some of that will be covered by the voucher though too, right? Well, the vouchers are already getting the max about the rent. Oh, okay. So, and the residents just paid their portion, but this is for those who are in like a 30% unit where the, we could be cheap, charging probably 705, but their rent's still in the 500s. So, because Increases, like I said, yeah, I, are you looking at the impact of that existing on yes. your resident? Yes, yeah. so we're yeah. comparing their, their current. Well, we have to follow fair housing, so we can't make a specific decision based on somebody's specific. No, income, but, but you want to look at that. We'll pull the each household AMIs so we can see that compared to the percentage of unit they're in compared to what they're paying and increasing. Not to like no, every, nobody's going to match like that unless they're very close to it and it's less than the percentage we're going. But it'd be very, it'd be fair across the board, and it's like there's a lot we're looking at. So we're yeah, not looking at going from 500 to 705. No, I mean, no, that's, no, that's no. We're looking at a percentage increase based on what they're already paying, and only increasing it a percentage. Mm -hmm. And everybody would yeah, just like, say, but it would, it would be, I'm assuming, less than 10 percent. Even though you might want to entertain 10 percent, but. That's going to be a wallop for a lot of people. We, we are definitely looking at making sure that it's not a wallop for people. There are, so we have, a, a, it's across the board. We have some people that are at 60% income and they're paying 30, paying rent based on what a 30% income would. So they're, they have. It's a disparity. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's some of the other, other situations as well. So we have to weigh all of that, make sure this is, um, you know, it's swallowable. Not, I don't know what yeah. the exact percentage of a threshold is on that yet. We're looking at all of it. To see We're looking at like what social security plans on increasing as well. So there's a lot of factors we're putting into this. Yeah, but the minute social security increases, yeah. so does Medicare. Mm -hmm. So it's a wash. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. But yeah, basically, is. for example, at Village Place, the the rent we're collecting is so low that it will impact our ability on the race vacation. To get an investor that will yeah. work to do this. Yeah. So we have to wait. There's so many things to weigh. 
Yeah. Um, so just try to come up with something equitable and doable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just don't want to say a bunch of people ending up with homeless lives. Right. right. We're, that's why we're looking at the households. Okay. Have, it's it's what they have. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. There, yeah. there was uh, a lady at our front door um, uh, looking for the, for the man, you know, where this manager wasn't there. So, but as she was leaving, she said, well, I've got to find a place to live. Where I'm living just increased my rent 200 a month. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 you know, I just, yeah, that that's happening out there, uh, and and hopefully we're in a position to be the fallback when that happens. Well, to it's hard know, because all our costs time. are increasing, and like I said, we're yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, the increase. I know, I know. Yeah, we've yeah. got to have to weigh all of that. We've got to be able to do the property has to operate. We also need to be that. So, you know, we are housing last resort for some. So I'll just start passing the rumor and get people braced. <laughs> and actually I've been doing that the last couple of years, just expect it. Yeah. You know, we can't, we can't go on forever without any of that. Yeah, it's the, some of our costs have almost doubled, some have tripled this past year. And then yeah. with the delays and people are like, well, I've been waiting for a new kitchen soon for six weeks. I'm like, we've been waiting nine weeks for the new faucet yeah. and our supplies, we just see our supplier costs going up. Yeah, yeah. there was a movement and I could be talking a couple of decades ago, since I've been retired at least a decade now, um, that uh, we didn't keep inventory. It was just in time inventory. Are you familiar with that? Well, and I'm looking at the consequences of not having inventory. It, you know, we might have to, it, but not having it and having to wait and wait and wait, because the last three years has been horrible. And with COVID, and then, uh, and now with uh, the iffy international situation of who's going to be able to manufacture what, um, I'm, I'm we're looking. actually working on that. So okay, we've instructed maintenance. Like if you start seeing like like the lodge, for I'm going to use them as an example. We've started noticing that their smoke detectors are hitting the 10 year mark. I was like, every time you order, you need, you know, you need one. Order two because we know they're going to have another one. As soon as you use that one, order two more. You know, get, yeah. get that back stock filled yeah. so that you know, because we know it's coming. So same with faucets. I'm like, keep one on hand so emergencies. We're not making that last minute run to Home Depot or Ace Hardware paying twice as much that we could pay through HP. Let's have it on hand. Yeah. So are you looking at big appliances as well? We don't have one in the store. When we asked the Meadows, we were very lucky with the recent occasion that we were able to pull 10 fridges and store them throughout, and we, we have one left, I think, that's pretty great. So, but we pulled them and separated them out through the portfolio so that we had backup fridges because we knew, yeah. you know, they were delayed, they were on back order, so yeah. we've used most of our 10 fridges along with ordering them, but yeah. it's time. So one more just comment on the balance is... We're in this position where we're trying to catch, you know, we're getting feedback about the maintenance and the projects, the properties. Sure. Yeah. And we're trying to catch up on backlog from um, the years, the pre-COVID years when LHA was in its budget situation and the COVID years and everything that did. So the yeah. fact that we are still working on catching up properties in this cost situation and, I mean, budget was tight this year, but we made it, but we're right. going to make it. Yeah. And then also having no rent for it's just like a double hit too. Right. We can't provide the things that the residents are asking for without, it has to be a, you know, it, it, yeah, exactly. so exactly. it's just a balance. Yeah, yeah. So, so does it work the other way also, this came up in one of the interviews, somebody who had lost their spouse, then when it, they come up for um, renewal of their lease, does that adjust their cost? Uh, not their, no. if they're not on the right now, if they're not on the right uh, And I told my Okay. <laughs> I, I do have a question when 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 impossible <laughs> about the rent increases. Um I know we're we're looking at increasing the rents of the people who are currently living here, but are we able for new new residents who are coming in to charge a higher rent, more max? That's, that's, that's helping. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. All new moving is white tech, except for Village Place at the moment, because it's hard to get max with um, 
the type of product we're offering because they haven't gone through recertification. But we know once recertification happens, like Aspen Meadows, everything moving does go to the mass site. Yeah. yeah. So we do get that. So these are just people who have been there longer than a year plus. Well, and you know, I would rather increase rent every year slowly rather than yeah. like one yeah. day, okay, we'll get the 10% or three. Yeah. Uh, right. sort of right. thing, you know? Yeah, I it will be a, it will be a process. A gradual rather than yeah. over the yeah. yeah. So going forward, yes, we will it will be minimal compared to right. yeah. this one though, but that's just something we have, we have to look at. And that's why I want Carol and Kendra to go to the properties with me as we start. We'll have a letter that will go out prior to copying conversation. So this is what our proposal is and this is why. And then have Kendra and Carol there to help go through this process. You know, yeah. I know we had a meeting with some Spring Creek residents a couple months ago, so where Molly, and Kendra, and I sat down with the budget with residents who and they got to see it with the data realized they were paying a mortgage payment, they didn't realize this, and they thought we had all this money just laying around. And they're like, right. Well, what happens to the money from last year? And we're like, That goes to the investor, we don't get to keep that in our pocket, that has to go to pay down debt. So, so having those conversations and having this week, a clearer picture, I think will help as yes. well. Yes, there's a lot of projects we want to do, but I keep on saying, No, <laughs> mm -hmm. we've got a plan and budget. And but that helps because then they, when residents can see it in black and white, it, it is, it's that, it bridges that gap. Yeah. Oh, why should I trust you? But when you try to put it in black and white, you've got to submit it. That's much more palatable. Mm -hmm. Like, like I said, there's a lot of lot how we propose it to the residents. It's like we budgeted for. 11 school pools, we've had 15 and we're not even done with the year. So we know we're going to be over budget on that. The insurance cost went up. This went up. Everything's going up. That money has. Yep. yep. Business at all? All right. So move to adjourn then. Uh, Hey guys, I have one more thing. Sorry, I have the screaming child who won't let me speak. Um, I just wanted to know, are we doing anything about the death of um, Anton? Who, Anton Dwarak, who was a LHDC member? Did we, do we want to, you know? He was a, I didn't know he was an LHDC member, but I, I am aware. Okay. Yeah, he, I think he's been like a long, long serving member in the community and he worked with um, Cameron. Yeah. So it would be nice, uh, I think, if we could honor him in some way. Okay. Does anybody have ideas? I don't know, like maybe a memory, like a tree or a bench or something. I think they did list one of the. Let's. I'll put that on the list here, Lauren, to look at. Thank you. Arlene just said we should look at the um, the organization that was listed on its obituary. Yeah. So Longmont United oh, Hospital uh, Foundation was one. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks, Hi. Lauren. Yeah. No problem. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.